Hey guys, this is Leo from Generate Press and Generate Blocks. In this video, I'm going to do a walkthrough of the div template from our site library. Let's get started. Let's click on the first container. Open up the block navigation, and you can see that there's a grid wrapper followed by two containers. The first container has a headline block followed by a buttons block. The word powerful is highlighted using the highlight feature from generate blocks. So the color can be changed here. The second container only has a static image. Moving on to the second container, the structure is quite similar. It has a grid wrapper followed by two containers. The first one has an image block and the second one has a headline block followed by two paragraphs and a button. The main container has a background color with gradient activated. And this dash here is using an icon. Moving on to the third container. So for this one, we start with a headline block, again with an icon, followed by a grid wrapper with three containers. Each container has a headline block with an icon, a paragraph block, followed by a buttons block. The container itself has a custom CSS class added, column shadow. This is needed to add the shadow using additional CSS. And then the headline block itself has a negative top margin added. This is needed to create the overlapping effect here. Let's click on the next container. So for this one, we have a grid wrapper with two containers. So that's this one and this one. Inside the container, we have another grid wrapper followed by two containers. So that's this one and this one. The first one has a static image. The second one has three headline blocks. Then the last container is super simple. It's just a headline block with a buttons block. So that's the home page. Next, we will take a look at the services page. The first container is super simple again. It has a grid wrapper followed by two containers. The first one has a headline block with an icon followed by two paragraphs. And the second one has a static image. The next three containers also have very similar structure. It has a grid wrapper followed by two containers. The first one has again headline with two paragraphs. The second one has four headline blocks. Each of them has border size, bottom one pixel added with the icon to create the list. And the last container is exactly the same as the last container on the home page. Let's go to the about page. We will skip the first container as we've already been through this in the previous page and then take a look at the second container. So the second container has a grid wrapper followed by four containers. 
Each container has an image, followed by two headline blocks, then a paragraph blocks, and then a buttons wrapper with two buttons in it. So each container is 50%. Remember, you can add multiple containers, as many as you want, under one grid wrapper. So you can control the horizontal gap and vertical gap easier. Again, the last container we've already been through. Next, we have the work page. This page has four containers that are basically the same, just with alternating order. So remember, you can switch the order easily by moving the blocks around. We will skip the block page for now and take a look at the styles page. So this page just gives you some styles that are used throughout the entire site. And then we have the contact page. Put a similar layout again. We have a grid wrapper with two containers. Inside the first container, we have a grid wrapper for this part right here. It has a headline block with an icon followed by a paragraph block. Let's take a look at the element. So first we have the block page header, block page hero. That's specifically for the block page. So it's just a static headline. You can see it here. Next, we have the block posts headers, block page hero. So this one has a dynamic H1 title, followed by a container with inline post meta items. So you can add three inline headline blocks. The first one is the post date. The second one is just a separator. And then the third one is the post author name. The display rule here is post all posts, which means that you can see them in all single posts. Title, date, and author name. Next, we have the block post with layout element. So this one simply set the content width of single posts to 800 pixels. So that's this width here. You can see that it's narrower than the global container width set in the customizer. Next, we have the full width pages layout element. So this one set the content area to full width for all pages. This is needed if you want to use generates blocks and build some full width content. So that's for building these full width sections like this. Moving on, we have the global page headers, block page hero. So this is just a H1 dynamic title and can be seen throughout all the static pages. Lastly, we have the site footer, which is a block hook element. 
This one has a grid wrapper followed by four containers blocks. And they're all different size. The first one's 15% with an image. The second one is 22% followed by three headline blocks. Then we have another container, which is 28%, followed by a headline block and five buttons. Lastly, we have another container block that is 35%. This one has two headline blocks and a MailChimp subscribe form. This element is hooked to before footer and display to the entire site. The footer here is still coming from the copyright field in the customizer and a menu widget in the footer bar area. Let's take a look at the CSS. The first block here provides style to all buttons in GP. The transition and transform effect here also apply to the buttons from generate blocks. So this is done by adding a custom class to the GP buttons. So if you go to events, you will see that there is a additional CSS class added. The second block here adds some more padding to the default mobile header. You can simply remove it if you don't like the style. The third block here adds the same button effect to the post comment submit button. Then we have the navigation hover effect. So that's this effect right here. Then the column shadow that we talked about at the start. So that's the shadow added to the container here. Then we have the rounded corners for the images. This allows you to add the rounded corners class in the additional CSS class so that the images would have rounded corners. The same style is also added to the post images. So that's this here. Lastly, we have some MailChimp styling here, mainly to match the default style of the entire site. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.